Adversity, bring it. The struggle, we welcome it. Snooze on life, never that. We are Dave Regina and Mike Perella, and this is the No Snooze Podcast. Come on. Welcome back, No Snooze Podcast, episode 147. As always, caffeinated in the booth with the big three. Michael, the show Pirelli, Claudio, the voice, Valenzuela, and I am Dave, the body, Regina. Welcome back to another episode. Welcome back to another week. Spring is in full effect. Um, I'm saying that because I'm doing a lot of housework right now, Michael. You're making it, me look bad. No, I'm not. No, no. It's a lot of headache. You know, everything is green and there's sap all over the place. The patio's dirty. Like things got to get done and I'm doing none of it. Got, I got a guy for that. You know, yeah. my yard is, how do you describe it? You ever see Sandlot? No, you're not moving. Yes, yes, yes. You're killing me, Smalls. Let's go. I have to use very general movies for you to get. <laughs> See, but you give me no hype. You give me no hype. Because that's not impressive. That's not impressive? That's not an obscure reference that you got. Wow. But anyway, you know where the dog is in that movie? In yes. that yard? That's yes. how my yard looks right now. He was the biggest dog ever. Yeah. Right? Big, I mean, big boy. Ever. But then they squished him. Remember his name? What was his name? Bandit. Nope. Um, Come on. It's your twin. <sighs> Rocco. No. Think about strong Greek men. Zeus. Not close. Thor. Not you're closer with Zeus. Who's uh, Zeus's son? Hercules. It was Hercules. Wow, like I'm Zeus and you're Hercules? <laughs> it, was Her- it, it was Hercules. It was Her- Hercules, yeah. Let's go. You see yo, C V. Give me some credit. You guys are lame today. So what yard work are your guys doing? Because <laughs> you're not doing them because you're not handy. It. So, I mean, listen, no, I'm, I'm not handy. Um, I know it's get handy 2023. Yeah, but well, um, You're not a part of that? I mean, you have the basic work that needs to get done from the wintertime, right? Yeah. I got to turn over the grass. The sprinklers somehow got to get turned back on, but they're in the ground. So, turn back on. <laughs> so they come up. Uh, they water everything. They make everything nice and green. Some yeah. plants have to go in the ground. Uh, patio's got to get um, scrubbed and cleaned. Uh, the fence needs to be power washed, right? So there's a lot of that stuff. And then also I'm doing um, just a, a shed because I ended up uh, leaving my my furniture out way too long this year. And my gazebo went flying like I've shared on the podcast. So that's toast. Straight Wizard of Oz. So, so I had to put, oh, yeah, good reference. I see you. Um, so I had to put all my furniture in the garage, which is mm-hmm. not a vibe. No. So I said, you know, I got to get- is a cigar lounge. Right. We know thank this. You, thank you. Had to get the shed. Um, so my man Oscar, you know, came through. He he laid the base or or the foundation, if you will. There you go. Yeah. So he put a, he put a little wood wood around the sides, right? It's a ten by seven shed, so it's not huge, but yeah. he did probably a ten by twelve, maybe or twelve by twelve as okay. a base. Okay. Because um, he said if you ever want to go a little bigger, you know, you can. Um, mine's out. Of, mine's a six and a half by six. And concrete half. slabby, counting? concrete slab. Okay. Right. Then then some rocks on top. I guess uh, gravel, if you will. There you go. Right. Then um, a rubber base, and then the shed on top, and it was built like that. Quick, two days. <laughs> um, so that's that's uh, that's where we're Do at. Do you want to send him over to my house? Yeah. yeah, I mean, he listen. I just don't see. I I understand the value for you because it's um. What do we always talk about? Intrinsic value for you. Is no. that a, is that it? Is that it? Oh, I don't know. No, but like a personal value to you because you like to be handy and fix things and it's clean become a new and- hobby. Hobby. There you go. I don't. I'm not golfing these days. I'm not playing basketball. I am working out. Clearly, <laughs> clearly, he came in with four shirts on CV. Did you notice that? Because I'm cold. Like, <laughs> no, no. He's trying to hide the body. He's 36 percent body fat. Right I, now. I'm up there for sure. <laughs> but I'm on a little bit of a roll. I don't want to say anything. A little bit of a roll. Kids are starting to sleep. Knock on wood. Don't jinx it. Don't do it. Feel like a new man these days. Oh God, I had a horrible, horrible night with Callie. Um, was she like, Dad, you didn't do this stuff yourself outside? <laughs> no, literally yesterday, though, like, she didn't sleep at all. It was one of those one of those nights where you literally just, like, you look at the, the phone to see what time it was, and you're like, well, hopefully that was two hours that went by. Every time I would look, it was like 40 minutes. And you're like, it can't be real. Yeah, it can't, yeah, yeah. this can't be, this can't be. So I literally felt like a zombie yesterday, all day. Uh, but she, I, you feel bad, because she was throwing up, diarrhea, stomach hurts. She said for the first time ever, dallium dizzy 
And I'm like, what does that mean? Aww. She's like spinning, spinning. Aww. So I was like, damn, what's going on? Um, so she was in rough shape for a full 24. She's she's bouncing back though. Um, but you know, you take the day as a uh, bug, as as an L. Yeah, and you, you yeah. do the best you can, and you know, you move on. We've been taking L's for about three years. <laughs> three years, and uh, finally catching some dubs. That's right. A couple in a row, four in a row. We had four sleep full nights through in a row. I was like, what did you do with my kids? Wow. I was so much more happy. Keep knock on wood. Even for those four nights. That's good. like a vacay. I'm like, what is going on? I get a workout, I made a little breakfast, and I went, I went like this, nothing. <laughs> it's <laughs> nothing. very no bizarre. Cry, no it's screaming. weird. It's very weird. <laughs> wow, that's incredible. Um, but no, I, you know, tighten up as usual. The basement gym is really coming alive. It looks good. It's coming alive. It looks really good. I'm not going to lie. I don't know if it looks good. It looks better. No, it looks good compared to, well. Don't compared- say good, because good's like mats on the floor. Like where we're going is going to be good, mm-hmm. you know? I, I'm impressed because before Who are you I mean, by? I'm goddamn handy too. Ah, listen, man, I hung the treadmill was from. It looked oh, like yeah, it was yeah. from treadmill's 1907. Big treadmill was a big pickup. I mean, the way that you you kept it all dusty, and I, I don't know how you worked out. In I wiped it down recently because <laughs> I'm like, this is not healthy. <laughs> it's not it. Uh, it's not it. <laughs> uh, if you have, if you're flush with kashish, like some of us are, the guy to the right. CV's right in the booth to the right. You can you can purchase things and speed up the the rate at which you improve things, right? Yeah. If you're if you're starting a new company, right. so to speak, you're in the first year, you're trying to cut costs. Yes. So who's the cheapest handyman you know? <laughs> Myself. Like a good business. Right? So yeah, like that's the slogan, <laughs> yeah, cheapest handyman hand hand you know. <laughs> but you don't promise quality. You just cheapest <laughs> handyman you know. Uh, and then you'd be like, I'm cheap. What do you expect? <laughs> um no, but I've I've really enjoyed improving the spaces where I spend a lot of time, right? Or yes. plan to spend a lot of time. Dana would prefer that I improve some things in the house. You know, we have a kitchen that's falling apart, but that's what that's what it's for, you know? The kids are going to run to the ground. Don't worry about the floors. Don't worry about any of that. Our, our <laughs> oasis of bedrooms are good. We're good. We're we got good. the CO. We're good, yeah, right? Okay, okay. We explored some HELOCs potentially mm-hmm. after the conversation. Um, not My big thing is we're not in a position to purchase currently. But there is a, 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 a chitter chatter about the commercial world and some opportunities in the near future because all of these rates, all of these seven to 10 year um, loans are coming due. And instead of trying to refinance into a worse deal, a lot of people will sell. So I'm trying to prepare myself maybe in the next year or so mm-hmm. if a opportunity becomes available to be able to capitalize on it. Don't know if it will. I might not ever capitalize on it. To sell the house? No, no, to buy something. To buy something, yes. To buy something additional because right. we're going to stay in our current house, which is – that's why I'm investing all this time and building out things that I can uh, – it'll make sense to stay because I won't want to leave it, right? You can't, can't leave like, two panels of a fence. Absolutely not. <laughs> I have, I'm up to – we should do – I'll do a panel count on my updates. I have one, two, three, four. Five, six panels. I was trying to be you this morning yeah, when I was panels. pointing to yeah. to where the, the don't you love when my finger was. comes in the frame? Well, this is the foundation. No, it's good because it makes sense. People follow it, but like I'm sure people were looking at my video. Like this dude absolutely did not build this. Uh, some people probably believed you because you look <laughs> handy. Like you look, you'd be able to put something together. But then, see, well, they don't know your. You do have callus. I'm so. saying. I mean, this is from carrying all the wood and the uh, the gravel with my bare hands because I don't see, use see, gloves. But CV, back me up here. Is there nothing more rewarding <laughs> when you think about something you want to do and then you build it and make it out of nothing? Like the foundation. Yes, it wasn't a major undertaking, but I had to measure wood. Did you know a two by four is actually one and a half by four? See, that's stupid. Like, Isn't that, that, that dumb? That makes you no that? sense. Who? Do, no one that tells makes you that. no sense. Right? So I go to the store with my little... <laughs> It's ridiculous. I come in with a, a tape measure and I'm measuring the wood, and people are like, "What this is they do?" I'm like, "This is a two by four. And I was looking, I'm like, two by four. This is one and a half. I was about to go up and argue with the people, but then I'm like, "That's probably yeah, that's the standard." Probably standard. Yeah, I wouldn't know that. And then I, when I bought my cinder blocks, I'm like, well, how, "How does this work?" And the guy was like, "What do you mean?" I was like, "A drug deal." How does this work? <laughs> Just go out there and grab as many as you want. I'm like, what do you mean? He said, "Well, you pay here, then you go outside." And I was like, "And then I just do it." There's no one that does. he's like, "Yeah, you do it." And I was like, <laughs> I was People. like, I'll have twenty four cinder blocks, yeah, yeah. and then I get out there and I'm like, oh my god, I didn't measure if they're gonna fit in my car, <laughs> so, so I'm trying to push these cinder blocks. In. It's it's a whole project. I uh, see. So you say there's nothing more rewarding of that whole process. That sounds terrible to, to me. There's nothing more frustrating than spending a day on things like. But I'm my not dad. A day. No, no, no. But my dad, the handiest man in the world. I mean, he he's just that guy. I gotta give like, him a he's, call. He's just that guy. Uh, but sorry, Dad. 
and I know you've been tuning in here and there. It takes him a really long time to do these projects, you know, and then he gets frustrated Patience. at like, oh, well, you know, I can't get it done because I'm being pulled in 97 different directions, just like everybody is. He owns his own business, but he really enjoys this stuff. Yeah. But to me, there's nothing more rewarding than asking Oscar to do a job. And then I leave in the morning and Oscar pulls up, starts his job. I hit him with a little coffee, some bananas, a little fruit bowl. Leave the door open so he can, you know, go to the bathroom. Then when I come home, the job is done. Yeah. And then I could reap the benefits of putting things in my shed. That I enjoy because yeah. I like organization. Yes. I don't mind, you know, organizing things. Yeah. But well said. for me to sit there and build this would have been, uh, it would have been laughable. Oh, yeah. You well, know? that's a whole not a shed's like another. That's why I'm starting with the oven because I'm like, yeah, it's bricks. Once I get to the actual bar, <laughs> yeah, which yeah. I promised everyone, yeah. it's going to be a project. <laughs> I might just buy a shed oh, at that man. point. But here's my thing, right? <clears throat> Skill stacking. When I finish this project, I'm going to have the confidence to recreate this, whether that's in my villa in Italy in mm -hmm. the future. Excuse me, our villa in Italy. Thank you. Not you, Thank our you, family. Man. Oh. Uh, wow. You can you can use wow. it. I won't charge you. I'll give you a break as long as you bring me some coffee. Um, potential rental properties that I'm going to buy. Right, mm -hmm. I'm not going to do it, but I'm going to have that new lens where I'm going to say, "Oh, that'd be cool if you do a retaining wall here and it creates a little more living space." It's just another muscle within my field yes. that I'm really enjoying exploring. Mm -hmm. and I love learning, and I it's the the real come to Jesus moment that made me want to be handy was when I thought through. A couple people I talked to about how their daughters call them to fix things, like whenever. Mm -hmm. And in my head, I'm like, if they called me to fix anything, I wouldn't know my ass or my elbow. That's me. French. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I can't 100%. rationalize doing that, you know? My thought process, because yours are very similar to my dad's. Wait, one last point. Good. And I read a book. It's called like the something pillar. Good book. I forget the title. Pillars of something. Mm -hmm. It's about a guy who meets a guy and the guy's working on this big estate and he thinks it's just someone working on a estate, but it's the actual owner. Yep. And he mentors him and stuff. And then the guy dies of cancer. So nice. it's like a cool like storyline. But this guy, he's like, I really enjoy getting my hands dirty because my whole life I was just delegating. Yep. So anyway, mm -hmm. sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Um, my, my thing is, is relationships, right? Um, for for I'm example, a relationship with everyone guy, at Home Depot. Dude. <laughs> for for example, the guy that I you know use use now to do my work, who's done my patio, some stuff in the house, um, anything that I need done outside. The first time that I saw his work, I really I really liked it. Yeah. Um. So immediately, what I did was I started a group text with my block. Um. You know, my neighbors on the block, probably six of them. Um. I said, hey guys, just introducing you to Oscar. You know, he does really good work. I sent a couple pictures of like a before and after You're for just him. Like this. Um. Because he, you know, he he doesn't do that. He he's yeah, a, yeah. he's a worker, right? Yeah. So he wouldn't think to do that. Um. Whereas my immediate thought was like, oh, you know, this dude is good. It's convenient for him because he's gonna get business on the block. Yeah. Um. And then also there'll be benefits that come back to me. 100%. You know, just off of the relationship building experience. Um. And now it's to the point. I mean, you know, he he mows my lawn and literally has seven lawns to do. Um. He just did you know patios for my neighbors he does everything so now he couldn't be more grateful for basically me putting him in contact with everybody um and that's kind of how i how i roll even in in real estate right mm -hmm. like when i have a unit that needs to be available or something needs to be done i look for ways to okay i'll lessen the rent on you if you can take care of snow removal yep. and you know i happen to be very fortunate to where i have a lot of handy men mm -hmm. Uh, in my in my arena, mm -hmm. both personally and professionally. And now one um, additional, and now one additional. And Mike Pirelli Greenwich Real Estate, go follow. CV is very handy though. Um, yeah, he, well, he's the handiest. He's he's been handy though. You're just you're you're new in the game. CV CV's been solidified for I, years. I feel very yeah. valuable to CV as I'm <laughs> handing him raw materials because yeah, I'm like, go. at least my man is putting these to good use. I'm giving him another life. <laughs> it feels like I we have a nice connection. There you go. There you go. Uh, but no, so and and it's just two different two different ways of of thinking, you know. But for Callie Michelle, you know, I. I am sorry. Um, she will be calling me, and I will take care of it. You'll call the person. Absolutely. Yeah. But but I will make the phone call, and somebody else will be showing up and handling the job. I believe it's more for me also the irrational project, right? Because I can't project? pay someone to do this project and rationalize that to Dana, right? Like, I can't have them come and build a pizza oven and be like, we needed that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Versus if I'm doing it, it's a hobby. Well, what if you never eat out, eat out ever again with pizza and you just make it in the house? So every if pizza, I'm that good, every pizza you think order that's a you downside? make. Well, Are you saying it's an investment? That's yeah, what you're exactly. going for. 
So instead of spending a hundred bucks, you know, when everybody comes up, you put it right in the pizza oven. You save Dude, yourself some money. If, if I'm putting out pies that are like, if you guys are coming for the pies, I've made it. You know, let's do it. And think about it. Whatever you're craving in that moment. Yep. Hey, what's that? You have a little garden over there, Mike? Is it peppers? <laughs> Bell peppers, peppers, peppers on onions. There, right? <laughs> have you seen my money tree? Yeah, it looks good. Have you seen it's good? The stick him, looks real good. Little deals, the money tree shock the world. With those two stems? The stems, the stems, that's what they are. I literally, every morning, I, t- I rub them. it, Good. give me that money. I'm not exaggerating. I've had more action since this little sprout popped up than the last year combined. Wow. I got people calling me left and right. Hey, I heard your money tree's popping. <laughs> hey, right to do a deal. Money. Like, you knew that? <laughs> <laughs> that's dope. I like that. Um, so, yeah, when that thing actually produces money, then take it, buy yourself a, uh, oh, no, a laborer it. so you can <laughs> get the job it. done. Uh my whole my, my whole thing this year is the pizza oven. I never had a green thumb, never was able to do it. I'm breaking barriers here. Okay. I'm trying to prove I can do anything. And it starts <laughs> you, with building a who pizza Who are you proving oven. this to? Myself. Oh, okay. All right. Just the guy in the mirror. Is there nothing more satisfying than the bragging rights of just pointing at something and being be like, wow, you did it? The diet, right? When we did the 10% challenge. <laughs> no, how care. it was so nice to just smile that day, have the shirt off. Yeah, you say, look guys. Good. Drink that black coffee knowing I was going to do it. <laughs> yeah. That was the best. That was good. Um, all right. Listen, let's move on. So we have uh, we have questies that basically came in uh, throughout the month of April. As always, you can submit these questions uh, via our Instagram at Nose News Podcast um, or Gmail, which is Nose News Podcast at gmail.com. Right? Sure. There you go. Sounds right. So CV has <laughs> sounds right. Sounds right. Uh, CV has the questies. And, and we'll get please, rocking. let's not do too much handyman questions because I only have so much <laughs> expertise so far. Yeah. We wanted to take a quick second to let you guys know that we partnered with our good friends over at Orgain.com. We're happy to offer our listeners 30% off by entering the code NOSNOOZE30. Again, that's NOSNOOZE30 for 30% off your first order. If you're on the market for a new protein powder, nutritional shake, protein bar, or Mike's favorite, collagen peptides, Orgain is your one-stop shop. As all of you know, my Crohn's disease is currently in remission, and the only protein I use is from Orgain. My personal favorites are the chocolate peanut butter and the vanilla bean. With the code, you can try a two pound tub for under $20. Talk about not snoozing. Go get yours today. Now, back to the epi. What's CV, is that a turtleneck? No. It does look a little turtleneck. It looks like a turtleneck. <laughs> A zip up. What All right, cool zip. Oh. So that's like a quasi turtleneck. Because gotcha, that gotcha. is nice. You tuck Look the at chin my man in, in the your booth. Cold. He's looking lean. It's okay. a fresh no snooze hat right there. So it is nice. I've been following you guys for from day one. Oh, wait, is that the first question? Shout out mom. Wow. Shout, <laughs> shout out <laughs> Cindy Pirelli. Nope. We'll go back to that one. Oh, oh sin. I recently had a bad experience at work where two of my coworkers, technically subordinates, went to my direct boss and said my communication skills need a lot of work. I have my own reasons for thinking they, why they did this, but I do want to improve. From the business side of things, what do you advise I start, I start with to become better, a better communicator? The big communication. This is a very typical scenario, so don't feel like you're the only one. Um, you know, I'm <laughs> listening for the answer because I don't Sub- know the answer. Subordinates. Uh, so the, I guess this is how to become a better communicator, right? But it seems like her... In general? Her staff members or team members basically went to complain, right? Yep. Um, so one thing that I struggled with is I feel like I was a, a fluffer for a while, right? So mm, to become not- a better communicator and not... Nutella and fluff, Michael. Relax over there. Right? There's a, I think uh, there's another term for that that might be better used. But here. to become a better communicator, I think both in writing and verbally, you have to cut unnecessary information. Um, get right down to the point, and that's why I'm using the word fluff. Because once you get rid of fluff, your um, communication style becomes very direct. Um, I hate, despise when people tell me that oh, I'm uh, you're you're not being clear. Right. And it's happened to me a lot. Yeah. And I do question like, OK, is this person just a bozo or do I need to improve? And typically it's both. They're bozo. Uh, they're a bozo <laughs> and I need to improve. Um, but the way that you can really get clear with your communication is finding a way to minimize your communication. Don't overspeak, but cut the fluff and get rid of the unnecessary material. 
Um, and then I guess the last thing, and now I'm, I'm I don't. Do you wanna... think the delivery is important though? How you say it? Yes, for sure. Because if you're too direct and there's no empathy mm-hmm. or any like, listen, I understand what you're going through. CB on him, right? Got you. <laughs> Look at the yep, hair. Hair's looking full today. I'm worried about it. I'm thinning. Um, not that it's bad. Mm-hmm. If you're doing that, rock it out. <laughs> Be proud of it. For me personally, I like to cover the bald. You have a ten percent hair. Instead of the 10% pot. <laughs> it definitely wasn't good for that. And then I got to get this alopecia corrected. Anyway, we have, we have ADHD, right? No, yeah. you do. You get me off track. <laughs> I was flown, and then you're like, CV. Uh, yeah, if you don't deliver the message and you're too direct, yes, sometimes it's not very effective. I'm not saying fluff or sugarcoat it, mm-hmm. but I, I think it's important to un, to give some type of was the word when you when you frame it give some frame context? of context right give some context yeah. prior to giving the message and how i've been guilty personally of not communicating with the right tone sometimes yes and it comes off not how i meant it because mm-hmm. i rushed through that process yes i was rushing to get to the point yep because i did i believe similar to what you're saying but i didn't think through like there was a message here that needs to be delivered and hopefully be effective First right. is they just need to know this. Yes. Um, I guess the the getting rid of the unnecessary information piece is directly in relation to when people are complaining about you uh, and your uh, inability mm. to communicate. Gotcha. That's where you have to work on your clarity. Mm. Right. So that's what I was referring to. But then also something that I try to do um, just in my leadership and communication style is uh, transparency. You, you see a lot of times in business, especially when individuals are in management roles um it's almost like a uh, like a voodoo to make sure you don't share certain things with people who may not need to be in the loop i don't think you need to overshare but i think you provide employees with value a feeling of value when you let them in on certain things that they may not be privy to yeah um and i try to do that a lot because i've gotten really good results from it and you don't look for anything in return but when you provide additional information, it allows the other person to try to think in your shoes uh, because maybe you have to do things and make decisions that they may not agree with. But now that they have this additional information and you've been transparent, it might open them up a little bit more. You know? Well said. Yep. Good stuff. I think that person's going to really crush that work and I want to cut. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Okay. Um, I have this is the one. I have been following you guys from day one. Hey, good. Thank Whatever this you. person says, I am <laughs> automatically like. Oh, this is a, this is the college. I think awesome to see how far the podcast has come. I graduated college two years ago yes. and remembered wow. hear remembered hearing an episode where Dave mentioned that the most impactful college course he took was a public speaking. Yes, or a public speaking class. I took that. I took that class my senior year, and I got an A. The problem is now I have my first business presentation in front of my company in about three weeks, and I'm sweating just thinking about it. Number one, can you come speak for me? (laughs) That's not a bad idea. That's good. That's good. This is my proxy. (laughs) This is Dave. (laughs) No, not me. This this would be this would be a we. We go present for you. Uh, (laughs) Oh no. (laughs) Uh, Two jokes aside, can you give me a tip I can apply to capture the audience from the start? Slap your hands together real loud. Yeah, just grab the attention. Bang. That's from a movie too so, I watched recently. Oh. The menu. No, I've dark never seen movie. That. Don't watch I've it. Never seen that. You're skittish. Um, so one, shout out for following the No News podcast and graduating college and getting an A in your course. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> grab some <laughs> oh, gear. There you go. Um, no snoozeshop.com. Thank you. But I guess the question now is basically like, hey, I got an A in that course. It was really good, but now like I need to pl- apply it to real life. And I have my first business presentation. So, yeah. all right. Um, when I give presentation, I guess it depends, though, on the type of presentation. This is a business presentation, so I try to tailor it towards that. Um, when I speak to, like, kids or colleges or, you know, younger adults, I like to get personal and tell a story um, that can be impactful and, and and grab their attention, right? So you can always find a way to tell a story, but in business... I think my go-to, my failure in the past, let me start there. I used to give this buildup, right? Because I was taught and I think I've just been accustomed to like, 
you know, don't give everything away at the beginning. Uh, give a build up to then hit them with the climax bang, but before you know it, half your audience is already asleep. Yeah, right. So you never you never do that. So I actually think it's the opposite. You basically place your bottom line at the beginning. Don't keep people waiting for the impact that you're going to provide. Hopefully it's a business presentation. You're going to either give them some tips, some strategies, or maybe a new way of doing business. Um, and I think you should do that early and often, telling them exactly how they're going to benefit from it versus like telling them at the end, giving them 16 minutes of a presentation to then be like, well, this is what we're going to do. Yeah. And I think a lot of people go wrong in a public speaking space with that because when I personally listen to people speak, I want to know why I'm there from the beginning. Yeah, what's in it for me? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, my context is more from uh, pitches, like business yes. pitches. Yeah, yeah. In that realm, my biggest thing that I've noticed is that sometimes you think a presentation or a pitch goes well mm -hmm. because you get through it, when in reality, it you got through it because there's no interest and there's no questions. Yep. And then sometimes you do presentations like, ah, oh, they asked a lot of questions. They were trying to poke holes. And you're like, I don't know if I got it. And that was the best one because they're actually you're actually answering questions that are valuable, like mm -hmm. you're saying. So I would say be very – you have to listen while you present a lot of the time. You have to – To tailor it towards what they – Correct. Need, like yeah. you need to ask questions in a presentation. It's not a – so it depends. If it's a pitch, I like to ask a lot of questions in a pitch and have the answers ready, but I may not share – 75 percent of the answers right because they only want to know 25 percent, right yes. oh we're not worried about your marketing we get your marketing we want to know about this yes and then you talk about this one thing the whole time and then at the end of it you make sure that they understand what you're due for that thing mm -hmm. and that it's you know is there anything that i'd said that didn't make sense or you know is there anything that makes you uncomfortable with that approach yep. and then you keep drilling it down yes um no that's that's very well but it's said. very it's very different than what i was taught I, that, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because there's a human level to everything. Yep. And if you go into something and just act or act as like a, I got to get through my presentation will. robot uh, questions at the end, I think is the worst idea. Yes. Um, Unless you're doing a literal public speaking right. engagement for a specific where purpose, necessary. where they hire you for. Yeah. But but, e think, but even that, when you get hired to speak, it's really not like yeah, it's true. People think it's about you, but it's really not. Like you're trying to. Yes, you're the one speaking. But you're trying to impact them. So it's about the audience. And a lot of people go wrong there. CV, I'm curious from your perspective, right? Um, you know, CV does, a, does a, a lot of work with young adults specifically and building, you know, uh, it, it's youth development, right? Um, I know for me, whether it's speaking to them, uh, business professionals, today I have a meeting with a county legislator. Um, that's, that's an auditorium style meeting. So it's, it's going to be a, a bigger audience. I still get nervous every time. Yeah. And I don't think that's a bad thing. So once I started to kind of put that in my in my ear, you know, like you're supposed to be nervous type thing, but yeah. just go kill it anyway, that yeah. kind of helped. Um, but for you, I, I know we've we've specifically spoken and he doesn't like public speaking at all. At all, right? Um, but what would you say how would you how would you answer the question? As it relates to kids? Yeah, I mean, just in your in your in your world, right? Because whether it's kids or kids hard or audience. not, but yeah, it's, kids it's are they're, very, they're probably the hardest, audience. very hard audience. What's I mean, your uh, what's when it your comes style? to I guess talking to them? And there's two things that I think are important, and one of them is you have to determine whether it's something that is beneficial to them, and at that point, the strategy needs to be like make it relatable to them. That's where it comes yep, hard because yep. if you're old as like me, then <laughs> then you're like them. <laughs> How do I make it lit for the kids? <laughs> oh, yes. That right. would turn me exactly. Off. No, yeah, I, I, that's my point. Yeah, yeah <laughs> right. Yeah. No, I know. Uh, making it relatable to them, and the other option is if um, if I have to tell them about things that they need for like work and stuff. So that's very black and white. Then it's trying to make it as hopefully as non boring and as fun as possible, and still be able to get your message across. Right. Because if you just hit them with the black and white and they're just business, 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 you lose them fairly quickly. And, and either way, I gotta be honest. No matter what you say to kids, it goes in one ear and out the other half the time. Mm -hmm. So nine out of ten times, that's what you're getting. So yeah. you're almost like hoping, like if one got it, good. Yep. One got it. Hopefully that'll spread with him because that's really how it really spreads is between them. Yeah, they will listen to each other, figure things out more than like certain adults. Huh. Yeah, very nice. Super interesting. Yep. Yep. Next one. Yes, sir. All right. 
What are your personal feelings on AI? Do you utilize it, and do you think it will be harmful or helpful to kids? Mm. I, 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 so I know a little more context of, of this person specifically works in AI, uh, but then the conversation went back and forth of our kids specifically in the future, like the advancement of AI now, yeah, and how we think that it's going to impact our kids in the future. Change everything. And I want to hear from you. Yeah, it's going to change everything. It's already starting to change everything. Oh, yeah. Drake is going to not even have a career. It's going to be all AI Drake. That's um, all that TikTok is. Yes. Yeah, yeah, literally. No, but it's um, to say that it's not going to change anything, like it's probably going to restructure everything. Everything's going to be changed. There's going to be people losing jobs. There's going to be people doing different types of jobs within what they used to do, which is more communicating with like an AI interface. But it's like anything. It's like what we're doing now. Do you think it'll be helpful or harmful? That's a tough question. Uh, I think it'll be helpful for productivity. I think it'll be hurtful for purpose. Yeah. Because I, I think people are going to lose, like, purpose. I have that, an that's opinion. A good point. I have an opinion. That's a good yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not afraid of... How do I put this? I'm a realist of, like, if it saves time, it's more efficient, and you can get the same stuff done it's going to be used like mm -hmm. you know like people are always going to take the path of least resistance so it's 100 percent going to get used and it's already being used yeah so you got to figure it mm -hmm. out you can't just say oh i'm not you know i'm standing on a beach and there's a tidal wave I i'm just going to stand there and get hit in the face with versus like i'm going to go get a surfboard and figure out how to ride this thing yeah i think technology is one of the most amazing things that we our society our i guess our times have brought to humanity um I think it's an awesome thing when used in the correct way, but I think it's one of the most harmful things that is plaguing our youth. Mm. Um, I think for our generations, or not even our generations, as you get older. Like our generation, like here? our Once you get older, so it's not even about a generation. Once mm. you hit that, you know, maybe like that 25, 30 year plus age gap, I think it's very useful, I he was gonna and I me. think your productivity can skyrocket. I think your marketing strategies can. But you're skyrocket. saying you already have, and correct me if I'm wrong, you already have these base skills from right. 25 yeah. to 30 years correct. of living. Correct. Yeah. And then we that's we're where fortunate it's being... to now be. Oh, I got you. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, now you're on top. Of you're right. stacking. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. that's yeah. where I think it's harmful that the youth are, and let's be serious, the youth is really the ones that <laughs> that are utilizing and kind of doing this way more than yes. us old folk. Um, but. But they're doing it for the wrong reason. So they're missing out on valuable skill sets that they need to have. Yes. And then by the time they become that age that I just referenced, you know, if they make it to that age with some good quality skill sets, then it's positive. But before then, I think it's just, you know, it's not good. I don't yeah. think it's good for that age group. Well, you're going to need new skill sets, right? Like we learned cursive and how to write mm -hmm. and do math with a pencil. I don't think I've ever done math with a pencil voluntarily. Yep. I do it when I don't have anything else, but I still don't. I grab the my phone's phone. on a calculator. Right. Yeah. But do you know how to do it? Yes. But it doesn't matter that I know it how to does. do it. It doesn't. It yeah, doesn't. On, on certain it things, I, I kind of agree. Like, it doesn't matter that I know. It's cursive. all about problems. Right, correct. Huh? Correct. It, it doesn't, doesn't matter, matter that, that he can write cursive. a script. It doesn't matter that I know algebra. None of that matters. Yep. You don't think so? No. No. So when you go, and nothing the only, matters. The, excuse me. Sorry. Yeah, unless you're a doctor, which is probably the only place that it's acceptable to have the worst handwriting on earth. <laughs> that's right. Good. Anybody yeah, that's else? I'm in pharmacy. Why are you taking from... jazz at doctors? No, no, I'm not because they're the smartest people that you know. They, they are they? Though? You know, well, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they they just the handwriting is we terrible. So. I don't <laughs> that's know. That's a known fact. Yeah. But if you go and this is what I see, and granted, maybe it doesn't affect you or your type world, everything. But um, I have kids. Yeah. And that's why I'm going to the kids. Yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. Their applications that come in for employment are so bad. Yeah. yeah. So bad that you can make the assumption. That because their handwriting is poor, they're gonna have poor habits, and that's a tough. Uh, it's cookie a big to, assumption, though. You're right. Yeah, but I mean, that's tough. My I mean, handwriting. Think bad. about the person that just looked at it and no, no, not knowing anybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, applications may hit your desk and you haven't seen, met, not, know nothing. Yeah, you see an application that's dirty, that's crumbled. That's here's my question though. And if you kind of you tight. automatically you automatically kind of put it to the side because yeah. in your mind you already have a preconceived notion it's that sloppy, it's dirty, it's sloppy. Know. You know what I'm saying? So, and, and I'm not talking about, like, I work with kids, so I see them. Yeah, I'm yeah, with yeah. them. So I know them as a person, and it's a different, think about a big company. But what if it's typed is my question. No, I'm not that would saying be great. that. I always tell the kids, type it. Because yeah. th th there cannot be any neater and more legible way. So that's my point. Imagine you go do your application for a credit card, and you put yeah. the wrong social security number. 
and you get denied. But that's not you still have that's to, mm. that's not the 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 um that's not pencil writing versus typing. That's just your not following directions. That's a different skill. Mike Pirelli. You right. need to learn how to crawl before you walk, walk before you run. You do not have run to learn how to sprint. write before you type. Yeah. Well, you so don't. I, no, it's no, no. Debatable. I, I, don't. I, I kind of agree you with both of you guys. Need to use, you don't need to learn how to manually do math yes. before you use a calculator. It's part of the right. problem solving not. skill so, set. But if you, you don't learn the pro- how to problem solve, there's other problems that are going to have to well, solve so my point. How, I know but how can you even get to that if you haven't learned the basics? It's a foundational thing. So I know you come from a much more. Um, credible source for this. I'm just saying from my personal experience, 95% of the stuff I learned in school, yes, the problem solving, I understand that, but there's other things that would achieve that that are actually useful. Correct. Cursive, never useful for me. Agreed. Writing, yeah, obviously, let's keep writing, right? Um, Long division, algebra without a calculator, no point. Uh, Agreed. There's, I mean, some additional classes like dinosaurs and stuff. Will I ever need to but know? But you what can dinosaurs say that are? now because you've done you've that. You've been there. You have your knowledge. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah, you feel very yes, comfortable in yes. what you know yeah. and where and, you are. And then your so expertise. So imagine if I take all of that away from you, are you the same Mike Pirelli that you are today? If you put in finance questions, I don't think so. If you put basic finance, basic um, interpersonal skills, and something else that was more vague and more useful for people just. A base, like you're saying, I think you're right. But a I agree with that. Foundation. I agree with that. Statement. But that's what I'm saying. You don't need social studies. But you still need right. math. But why right. not though? Oh, maybe you need social no, studies. Social I mean, studies is a big topic. But did you? So did you see? There was a whole. Do you know um, what I'm saying? Though? Yes. There was a whole um, news, like uh, not an article. This this was uh, on TV. What's it called? Uh, like a news story, I guess. Right. Documentary. On yes, on on AI, right, and the um, the impact that it's having in the schools. And they were interviewing these school teachers in Jersey for high school students yeah. about AI. And um, it's funny you guys are talking about this because it's the exact same thing. Um, Some of the teachers were like, listen, I think it's really good, but it's also very detrimental because they now. So (laughs) to students, they have the AI that they're able to say, hey, robot, write me a seven page paper on, you know, how to build a shed. Boom. In 2.4 seconds, (laughs) it comes up. Right. (laughs) Seven pages. It literally (laughs) a 10 page, 10 page. But it comes up immediately. Right. But now the teachers actually have the ability to to Go to AI and say, has this paper been AI'd. AI'd, AI'd, right? So they come back and now they're catching students on 100% plagiarism because they're literally doing that and they're writing a paper in 2.4 seconds. Here's my question, right? though. Yes. What kind of job are they going to have in the future, these kids? Correct. But they don't, they don't know that yet, but right? But you're still losing the skill set. But again, set. so the teachers and, the, and, and <laughs> basically what they were saying, skill set. and I agree with you, Sorry. but what they were saying is it's still a very valuable skill to be able to write a paper, right? And also writing, it, it allows you to be creative. And what AI, I think, does in a detrimental way is it takes away the creativity level of a student, right? And a student who's in high school or college does have to have the ability to think about, oh, well, how am I going to get from A to Z, regardless of it's something that you're going to use in the future or not, because the process is still going to be the same. Yeah. But I agree with you on a lot of on a lot of things in school these days that are absolutely a waste of time. Well, a lot of times they don't know, right? Like when we started our schools, yes. all that was relevant. Right. And then calculators became so good yeah. that it was it was just the timing of it. We did typing. I typed right. in class. And I learned typing through AOL. Right. Like typing class, I didn't do great. And then when AOL came out, I was crushing typing because I was using it. But it happens all over the place too, right? Like for us, I think one of the first things that we saw go um, was like easy pass and tolls, right? That was a highly- still have an easy pass. Yeah, absolutely. But I'm saying tolls, right? In general. That was a highly- But that was a highly sought after career. Oh, yeah. Individuals would spend 30 years on that job- and then retire with a yeah. pension, and it yeah. was great. And then it literally went to a form of AI yeah. to where, like, no nobody is is around. Yeah. Same thing is happening even – you guys are handymen, right? Same thing is happening even in this industry. Love it. For example, we have a stage that we're looking at right now, right? We had a, um, a an aluminum stage, which is, like, the best of the best, you know, thousands and thousands of pounds. But it's bulky. It's annoying to store. Um you know, there's certain hazards that come with it, but really it's just the size. We were able to have this company come in and basically provide us with a stage, no joke, that's way bigger than the one that we actually have that you can literally carry in a briefcase. It's awesome. So we were like, wait a minute, like this isn't safe. We had one older maintenance guy who's who's been there, you know, 30 plus years. And then we had a newer guy. The newer guy was like, this is it. Like yeah, if, yeah. We, if we can 
test this and, and you're saying that it can hold 1,800 pounds on each square foot, this is what we're talking about. But the old guy was like, there's no way that that's, you know, if that's not yeah. aluminum, you yeah. can't possibly do it. So it's happening all over the place. Yeah. Right. In every industry. See, I like that stuff. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, but you don't know if it, what if it's, you know, a terrible thing, you step on it and it breaks because that's an option too, right? I mean, it's been tested. It's it has, like but has you. it been tested for years like aluminum has? Good question. You know what I mean? I, my whole thought process on everything is like, I've seen how people in the past when we were younger, internet's not a real thing. Certain certain things that are clearly going to be around, yep. people just put their head in a hole. I'm not dealing with it. I'm not learning it. Yep. I personally was like, I'm not getting an iPod. I don't need a phone, this and that. And then at a certain point, you're like, this <laughs> is stupid. Everyone has it. Yes. It's the reality of life. You have to catch up yes. or you're going to be behind. So I don't use it, as, but I should. Right. I mean, like, why would I be editing clips? like little clips for Instagram if this AI thing does it at 80% of what I could do it. Right. Right. So mm -hmm. I think it's dangerous in a sense of you're right. It could take over all the basic skills and then people would be very just like dependent. But think about like Google. Mm -hmm. Like, do you need to really know the answer to stuff now? No. Not really. You just Google it. Right. Or give me one second, please. Yeah. And then you boop, YouTube. Boop. <laughs> Literally, like, how do I yep. do this? YouTube no, pops true. up. It's more, I think <clears throat> it's more filtering through the junk mm -hmm. is a skill now. Yes. Because like there is a million podcasts people can listen to. How do you find it? The podcast. That's right. No that snooze. you listen to. No snooze. Yeah. Um, or anything. Anything. In it's life. true. But I would say for my child, right? Like yeah, I'll yeah. bring it to my child. Yeah. I still do want, I, I want Callie to have an understanding of, you know, how and I, you can't say real life because her real life is going to be very different than my real life growing up right yeah but i still want her to have the ability to be creative um you know to learn the necessary skills that i feel as her father will benefit her down the line yeah. versus just diving into ai and of course she's going to be more into it than any of us and, but, and libby and these girls um but the reality is but you they're going to use it to be creative instead i hope of I Instead hope. of me sitting down doodling, yes. she's going to say, AI, make me a character that looks like Disney did mm -hmm. it and mix it with a cat or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think their imagination would be way better than ours because it's limitless. But they're not doing the physical drawing themselves. No, they're just doing it, seeing the picture, and then they're somehow piecing this together. Right. That's bad. Is it bad, though? It's just Hell different. Yeah, it's, bad. it's different. I don't it's know. Bad, I don't know. It's yeah. awful. We, Why? But we're because thinking... you're taking the one thing that we do, people mm, do. Yes. Creativity. You're saying... I'm, I don't want to pay you. You still to be, need a pilot. Though. I don't want you, you to know? be creative. Yeah. I want the machine to be creative and you to be the pilot. Well, the creativity comes through. So the, you just killed like half of the population of what that we know. wants to be creative. Of what we know. But though. Mr. But it's, it's, that can only go bigger. That's a right. snowball effect. Well, yes. It's going to start maybe with one little thing and eventually it will take over everything to the point that people's jobs may be gone. But think about your Delaware. job may be gone because why do I need a real estate agent if I can just AI it and Very I true. can one hundred percent. But that's, that's so, why. I'm... So, and but what are you going to lose? The customer service, the the person. No, that's customer there service might be you out. Oh, yeah, well, you might, you might... That would be terrible. But yes, <laughs> yeah. you know, there's so many things. 100%. So ultimately, so we're going to be just a, but, a robot infested like. But here's yeah. the thing. Here's my question for everything. Have you ever watched iRobot? Yeah, yeah, I have. have. Great movie. Oh. You haven't. He hasn't. He Will needs Smith, to watch it. Classic. What is it? A robot? Will Smith. I robot. I robot. It's Smith. Will Smith. Great movie. There's a dog in that movie too. No, that's no, uh, I'm that's, Legend. Oh, um, no. oh, shit. I had a good question. My question is, what can you do about the AI? Nothing. Nothing. It's here. No, you're yes. right. So Agreed. what's the point of being like it's bad? That's but that's not point. the question, though. The qu I, I, I think, I, I, I even I think started there's parts that are good by saying that. that I love technology and I love yeah, the yeah. fact yes. that where it's going. I just think in the hands of somebody that's not prepared, it's not a good thing, which is why I said from I the ages... Yeah. That's good. You know, 25 and up. And honestly, probably a little earlier. Yeah. It's just that those development years, the 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 years where you're supposed Important to, years. the formative years, yep. where you're supposed to develop all your, your foundational knowledge, that's where it's detrimental. From once you've gotten that section out of the way and once you have your education out and once you know what you know. AI cool. all day. Yeah. Do yeah. you. Because you're going you're gonna to probably make awesome stuff. I, I agree with that a lot. Here's the thing, right? Here's my question for you. If there is a way to delegate like if you you like to delegate, right? Mm. And you're not actually doing the act, right? But you're the orchestrator of all this stuff getting done and you're achieving and making things happen mm -hmm. in your yard, for example. Mm -hmm. If I gave you another tool to do that faster, more efficiently for less money, mm -hmm. you're going to use it. 100%. Wait, with right? AI? So you're just going to move up in the rank. With AI? Yeah. yeah. So think about it. So why don't we just get that little app where you can make your own little fire pit and your own little, uh, what app? you know, there's, there's those dumb little games 
and you can build your little fire station. Your yeah, little but living that might room. be a thing, CV. I might what be able mean, to say into So then we're not living in this reality. We're living on an alternative reality. But somebody like me, to his point, somebody like me, to his point, who's not going to build it anyway. Yeah. If I had the ability to say into my iPad, a 3D printer, say, for example, hey, listen, hey, AI, build me I have $10,000 to spend. I want you to find me a good contractor to build me a fire pit, a shed, a swing set for my daughter, and resurface my patio. And I would like it done in two weeks. And then that's all I had to do. What are my do. options? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do and you know who all... loses their job there? You. What? You're David Deals. Why? You're no, the, I'm not. You're the one that goes job. out and you're the one that finds But I said $10,000. So I would hope yeah. that that's my. Dude, you know, don't meet it. Or I could say, hey, he's I want to negotiate spend... with AI. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you're not going to be able to negotiate. That's hilarious. No, he's going to be able to get it. And then AI's going to throw up their hands. All salesmen are going to be done because that's the title, negotiating with AI. But But my point being is like, you're going to still have the creativity, but you're going to be able to do more stuff. Mm. Like CV is going to be again, able to I agree do with this that. podcast and maybe 20 others if but you I want. But I agree with that. Because your time to edit, yes. you're going to train this thing like a worker and say, this is how I want my videos edited. Da -da -da. You're going to go and make sure it was done correctly. Maybe tighten up a couple of things. Boom. Freedom. You can do something else. True. I think it's going to be cool. So that how do the future um, CVs come around? How do they learn the skill set that CV has? Yeah, you're, you're more you're beneficial. You're going to be very unique. Yeah, I mean, which you're I more think beneficial. Is good. But I'm going to be phased out. No, and there will be no be next one. Skill set. So yeah. you're going to get the people that. There's so, things that you, you know, learn DJs? in your in your in your process of of like learning. Yeah. There's things that you learn that ultimately define and kind of form the way you yeah. you do your professional stuff. Did you learn on a hand crank camera though? I did. You did. Well, no, I wasn't hand cranked. Yeah. So did but you? It, but no. it was a very old. Did you learn? Did you learn on cameras that you I don't snap age. the bowls and I, they? I don't want to age. Bro. He's not ninety six. But that's what I'm asking. <laughs> so you skipped those steps. So people are going to skip the well, steps. I'm, not, I'm not. I wasn't born in the 1900s. Exactly. You're literally <laughs> no. proving my point. <laughs> that's that's that. So why would you expect yeah. people to work on these cameras right. in a hundred years? Gotcha. Because those, the guys that are doing this stuff well maybe not today me, but maybe like 20 old. years ago yeah, yeah, 20 is. years ago well, yeah. those are the ones right there oh yeah look at yeah. that one that yeah. thing yeah. is 20 from years ago they did do that stuff but it's and they are the greatest so fast you're, yes. you're you're not taking into account the exponential growth of technology i think you're both right no there's no one wrong i think here. that's how we i'm end. just saying <laughs> and again you're still arguing with me as I'm if i don't arguing. as if i don't as if i don't agree with the fact that this is a great thing all i'm saying is that he's not pre 21 years old this is harmful. That's all I'm. That's all I'm saying. In some ways, I, see, yeah. I disagree with that yeah, yeah. statement because so it's argue not that, that one. Because the other thought, one, I'm on. Your, yeah, on yeah. Your, my on thought is like TV, right? Mm -hmm. If you're using a television to teach your kid numbers, it's good. It's good programming on there. Maybe you watch church on TV, mm -hmm. right? You have something that you believe in yes. that you're trying to translate to your kids. It, it's somewhat positive. You can't Absolutely. say that's a terrible use I of agree, technology. I agree. But a that. lot of people villainize the the avenue at which info is mm -hmm. delivered versus the actual info. Does yes. that make sense? Yes. I, I really agree with both of you guys, and I'm not just saying that. Like you can have a jerk kid I, that's I, playing on a... Do we a believe that YouTube is probably the greatest invention as it pertains to little kids? Yes. yes. YouTube? Yes. I mean, YouTube's you, incredible. You can, you can basically put whatever you want. And YouTube, yeah, it's kids incredible. Be, yeah, it's, right. it's a way for... Do you know how detrimental, how detrimental to their development years that is? In what way? Socialization. Number one, that's probably. Well, but if you're not doing though. that, though, yeah, it's huh? different. If you're not, there's levels, right? Like, there's no the way I structure my daughter is she's able to watch YouTube in the car and she's able to watch it before we go to sleep. But before we go to sleep, she has to watch something, you know, kind of blues clues, yeah, or something. like something positive to yeah. where she's also learning. I agree. You're saying it's detrimental, and I believe it would be detrimental if I just allowed my daughter to go all day long with right. just being, yeah, yeah, being yeah. in front. Yes. Right. My daughter goes outside every single day. She's at Big Park every day. She's down at the lake. Yeah. She goes to daycare. She's socializing, too. So I think when you have that balance, like I know Mike has as well, yeah. I think that's good. David, you're right? a good father. Do you agree? Yeah, absolutely. 100%. You're a good father. No, no, what I'm saying is- yeah, No, 100%. I agree with you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Think about- the tens of millions oh, yeah. of parents out there that don't well, that's think the parent or problem. do that's not YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Like that's you. the parent. But no, think about this. If it's not YouTube, it's something else. Think about They're going to be this doing is, drugs This on is side, what we are know? doing. Parents today are not equipped like parents of 50 years ago. They've been slowly evolving and phasing out of... of Go outside, play in the dirt. Right, foundational. You know. It's so much easier to say, hey, child, you're bothering me right now. Here, get this iPad. Get out of my way. Yeah. 
But and that now, parent's going to be bad regardless. Mm -hmm. There's you know? a, right, but that's the future. But, but that's he's tomorrow. Different. He's though. saying and there is there's going to be more. That's it, but, but YouTube didn't create those parents. The, those parents were there. Right. That's great. Great story. Thank you. But listen to what I'm saying. I'm one, <laughs> one, one out of ten <laughs> parents yeah. is going to be like the, you and David. <laughs> yeah. So oh, you guys are going to have thank great, you. great kids. <laughs> life. Nine out of ten parents are going to default to what's easy. Yeah. And nine, that's a big number. Yeah. That's going to be the future. That's going to be the majority of people out there. That's going to be the population. Yeah. So 10% of the population is going to be great. That's fantastic. Maybe 90 we don't is need to be... parent them anymore. Hey, AI, AI can you yeah. give me a, a boy with blue eyes? And then... Um, well, that's a whole other thing. You know, that's wild. Can you yeah. instill, that already can you instill confidence um, and old school work ethic into them? <laughs> I think that already happens. I mean, I know. None, of us an know, none of us know what the hell is going to happen. Yeah, right. I, I, my only, my yeah, only wrap question, us up on this. Yeah, on my this only one. question for all of it is like, did technology create that or is that a human's predisposition? Were we already like going to go that route and this is just the way? Like, if it wasn't YouTube, say it was, all right, well, just go on the corner and play in the playground, and then they're doing drugs. That's a lack like, of foundation, though. I think that's what I'm saying. Like, was it the technology or was it just people? I don't right. know. I don't know the answer. Good. That's the debate. Beautiful. Very good question. Sparked a lot of conversation. AI. AI. Do my points <laughs> for me. I hope I get put out of a job. That means my job's gonna be easy for you. He'll be a professional pizza maker forever. See ya, Mason, the one Mason, <laughs> the Mason left in the world. Go ahead, CV, talk to us. How do you guys deal with the lack of sleep from parenting? Ugh. I had my son six months ago, and for a lack of better words, I feel like a failure a lot of the time. I'm moody at work. I'm always frustrated, and sometimes I I question my parenting skills. I know I'm just getting started, but I'm looking for any tips I can get. Mm. That's a good one. Uh, uh, yeah, you're not a failure. No. no. I mean, that <laughs> I've had that thought multiple times yeah. in the last three years. Um, something that I constantly mm -hmm. tell myself when I'm in that mode, the lack of sleep, though, is really rough. Like, that's that's definitely the hardest part, I think, of parenting in general and then having the ability to move on with your day because nobody else deserves, you know, you to be moody or you to have an attitude because of, you know, the lack yeah. of sleep. Um, but I constantly tell myself that circumstances don't take away from present responsibilities. Yeah. Right? So regardless of the actual circumstance that's at hand, your lack of sleep, my priority level is the responsibility to the best of my ability at that time. And it's very helpful for me because, you know, if I just, it's very easy to throw in the towel, but when I have the thought process of like, you know, this is a temporary circumstance. I know it's going to be a rough day, but I still got to get through this meeting. I got to make this phone call. I got to take Callie to the park. You do things. You don't do it at the level to which you're, you know, motivated all the time. But I like stacking those days because those days, although they happen more often than you'd like, when you look back on this, that's not going to be what you remember, right? You're going to hopefully remember the good times. And if you're still able to work through those moments, I think the real difficult times that come, it makes everything a little bit easier. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's tough, though. When you're in yeah. it and it's consistent and it's like six months in a row, doesn't feel like it's ever going to end. Yeah. So and, the temporary and colic, doesn't colic is a different thing. Uh, we didn't even have that. No, we just had a, a baby didn't sleep. So it's like colic. colics, they just cry constantly. But they cry because of uh, an insensitivity or uh, sensitivity to either milk or they're yeah. just so yeah. uncomfortable that the baby cries 24-7. Yeah. So I would add to that. I think it's really important. I never did this in the past, and then I started doing it, but I went too extreme as far as like complaining. Mm -hmm. But I think being transparent with people, family, yes. friends, because a lot of people see, oh, amazing, everyone's very like, you're going to love these days, you're going to look back, and, and it makes you feel worse. We've talked about this because you're having such a rough time. Mm -hmm. But if you're transparent, say, listen, my kid doesn't sleep well. You know, I'm a, I didn't sleep great last night, but I'm ready to go. But just so you know, if I'm a little on edge, I apologize. Yep. But I'm going to do my best to kind of and then the people that hopefully are supportive of you will send out a little bit of a lifeline and either give you the benefit of the doubt in some situations, you know, offer to help Provide in some, some help, form, yeah. you know, whether that's an hour nap. Like, listen, I know you're having a rough day. You know, we can get this meeting done at the end of the day if you want to take a quick. So I think when given the opportunity, a lot of people are very understanding because mm -hmm. more often than not, a lot of people deal with some type of adversity at some point. Right. So I think being transparent about it, it's hard, though. That's a good one. Because yeah, how are you not, like, complaining all the time, which mm -hmm. I went into and, that. And when you see your uh, performance level drop, that's frustrating. But the reality is, like, w a conversation I literally had internally was like, listen, you're not going to be what you were the last two years. 
It's different. You're a different person. It is what it is. Mm-hmm. Now you need to recalibrate. You need a new baseline. If you don't achieve what all you want to achieve in this year, the reality is it's new. It's a and new it's year. not the priority, right? Because for this person, your priority is your child. You had a you had a child. You have a family to build a life around. They're not second to the business you're trying to build, right? Yes. So that's something I had to retell myself because you get discouraged. You're like, oh. But then you're like, oh, the reason I do real estate is for a more flexible lifestyle to be able to be present for them, you know? Very well said. So it's interesting. Not easy, though. There's no right answer. You just got to, like you're saying, you battle day to day. Mm-hmm. And uh, you find little, like, treats, at least for me. <laughs> like, caffeine. you look forward to that coffee. You're like, all right, I have a big meeting at, like, 5 if you drink coffee or caffeine. Whatever, tea, whatever it is, a snack. And you kind of, like, tailor and, like, listen, I got to get through a couple meetings, and then I'll have a little reset, yep. and then... It's hard though. It is very hard. Good. I like these questions, man. This was a good, uh, good little epi. It's good. AI uh, caffeine, taking caffeine's, over. Caffeine's running really low, so you know what that means. Uh, Wrap it up to uh, to my favorite section, Dave's dime of the week. Call me on a sip. Call me on a sip. I was a big sip. Um, so this is a little bit morbid. Oh, All right. Again, I'm sorry. Dude, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But also, it has a positive spin to it. <laughs> Nothing is fatal or final besides death. Now, this has been something in my head since my boy has has left, right? Chancy boy. I miss him every day. Every day I think about him, I still hear him like crazy. But what it's given me is perspective that all of the rough times along the way, I would I wish that I could go back. I wish that on the nights that, you know, he woke me up four times, I wish I had the opportunity to do that. Whereas at that time, I didn't have the ability to say like, damn, this could be worse. I got frustrated. I'm like, this is this is this is the worst thing in the world. Right. And and I've taken that now further to even business. There's no decision that you can make in business that's like really irreversible. You know, you can make a decision that can put you out of business, but the reality is you're still here to build another business, right? You can the guy take from Fire Festival. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, my man is back. He's back, and he's doing Fire this Festival is, too. This is what I'm. Really? Y- yes, yo, but this is what I'm talking about. My like, man's got balls. A financial risk, right? Take that. Take that risk because it's not the end of the world if it goes south. Like, of course, you don't want it to go south, but the reality is. If you're gone tomorrow, this is not even a thing. So we need to take the same approach as, honestly, like like immigrants. I, I know so many immigrants in this world that have the best restaurants, the best car dealerships, the best businesses possible. And 90% of them that I know personally, they're like, yeah, like I came from absolutely nothing. I remember eating tuna fish out of a can and thinking that it was steak, right? And now they have a multi, multi, multi million dollar dealership company. Um, it's, it's a risk factor that we need to, especially as, as, uh, the age group that we are in now, everything is really available to us. We just need to go all in, make, make the necessary adjustments along the way. But my point is nothing is really fatal. No decision that you make right now will harm you for the rest of your life. AKA fire festival too. There you go. I'm going. (laughs) Nailed it. I don't want to say anything and overshadow you because, you know, it's easy. But <laughs> it's easy to do. No snoozeshop.com. That's right, baby. Um, so thank you. Whether you've listened to one or 147, we're getting up there. We're also going to bring you guys some some interviews with some some cool people um, coming up. So looking forward to that. And um, We're going to interview AI. Yeah, we're going to ask questions. <laughs> we should do that. Hey, can you give us another 150 topics to get us to episode 300 and then boom it's done not a bad idea that's true um so guys thank you as always and until next time stop snoozing get up and build that pizza maybe you can get a better body with it i'm actually you know (laughs) do you know you can get it that's another epi in the books go follow us on instagram and facebook at no snooze podcast subscribe to our youtube channel no snooze